time to fix the power steering on the MGF. Um, typically with these they have electronic power steering so the steering wheel tends to fall to the left usually on these um, uh, as I've found out for no reason whatsoever. You start the car up and the steering wheel just falls like it's getting tired and just goes uh, just falls to the left anyways. What I've done is I've jacked the car up in the air using the central jacking point. I've got some bricks underneath it to support it just in case for whatever reason it drops. The reason why I've got the car jacked up is that when I turn the ignition on and get the car started, the power steering will kick in and the steering will fall to the left. When I come to adjust it in a bit, um, once I've adjusted it, I've got to make sure it's not falling to the left or falling too much to the right because apparently these are very small manoeuvres. I've never done this before. I thought I'd do a video just to help you out, just in case you want to give it a go too. And there doesn't seem to be any videos on fixing this, so I'll uh, let you know what's happening in my world as I go along. Anyway, as I say, jacked up at the central jacking point. I'll bring it a bit closer so you can see. It's here. I'm actually using the jack of uh, my Jaguar X type. It's a bit bigger, gives me a bit more height. Um, but if you've got a trolley jack, just as good, probably not, if not better. I have disconnected the negative um, lead on the battery terminal. Just because I'm messing around with the fuse box down here, I don't accidentally clip them. It catches on a bit of uh, on a bit of metal and just suddenly make all the electrics go bang. Um, yeah, let's not do that. So, anyways, bring up to speed with stuff. So, so far I've removed the plastic cowling already off the car. Here's it. Anyway, sorry, fuse board cover. That's down here. It just sits up in here. All you've got to do is release that one and that one with a flathead screwdriver. Like it's safe small half turn for each one then it just releases pulls away pop it out as i say you'll see i've had a bit of a stab at this one already i'll talk you through what i've done so, so remove the fuse box fuse cover and i have unattached two nuts one from here and one from here and that's what holds the fuse board in place. Now those are 10 mil, nice and simple to get out. And all phones, if you've got one of these, they're great because they're nice and bendy. Makes it easy to get into things you've got to get to, if not a spanner, um, a screwdriver attachment like this, something like that, anything so you can get to those. When I've done that, lifted it off, popped it over out one side. What I've also done is released this bracket that the fuse board attaches to. This goes onto that, so I've just released that, just giving me a bit more room while I'm trying to get to where I'm going to get to. And what we're after is, if we can get in here, this darling little thing right here. This covers the power steering sensor. This is because we've got some wires going in. And this is what tells the power steering if it needs to move a bit to the left, a bit to the right, and it keeps everything sort of centralised. We've got to go and have a fiddle with something in here. Like I said, I've not done this before. I've read some instructions, I haven't a stab at it. I'm sure you're going to find faster ways of doing this when you do it because, as I say, this is my first time. So, let's carry on for a second. What I'm doing right now is I'm using a T25 Torx security bit. Now, a T25 Torx security bit is this one right here. Now, I picked a full set of these up for two quid from my local hardware store. I mean, you can order them online. I got a full set for £1.99, can't argue with that at all. And these ones have a little hole in and I have a slightly different attachment on the end to so a regular Torx bit. Okay, so you want to make sure if you are going to order one off the internet or go to a local hardware store, it's a T25 security Torx bit. Okay, so I've removed one already. This is one of the T25 security Torx bits of the needs a hole in the middle. Most Torx bits don't have the hole in the middle, this one does. And that's why you need one, okay? I've removed one, I'm now gonna go ahead and remove the other. They are one there and one bit further up. So I've took one, sorry, lies. One, top left, top here and one over there. Okay, coming back to it, this is the cover that goes over the sensor for the power steering. There's two, as I showed you earlier, one and two. So they've got these sort of anti-tamper um, <laughs> torque security bits on there. Now, um, when the cars were made, um, they said that you should just replace the entire steering column. Most garages will get you to replace the entire steering column. Uh, I'll be honest though, I don't really fancy the idea of doing that. Um, 
so I've removed that anyway. And in here now, we can now see the sensor. Apparently there's some glue, I think. This is in here, I'll tell you if I was right or wrong in a bit. Apparently if I was to remove this, scrape some of this out, scrape some of the one out from up there, release very gently, release very gently, but I'm supposed to use the um, some Tipex or a bit of paint just to mark on the current positioning of it. So when I do move it just a little bit, um, I know what the central point is, because they're not supposed to be big moves, they're supposed to like move a little millimetre at a time, and that should stop the steering from falling over, but it's very trial and error. Um, I'm not using a multimeter, I do have one, but uh, I quite fancy the idea of doing it manually. Um, let's see how we get on. Right, I've, to turn, I've decided to turn the light on so you can see this a little bit better. Right now, here we go, what I was on about earlier. So after I'd removed that cover with those two security torx bits, I can now see what we need to adjust. There we go, perfect. Right, so you'll see in there, again, another couple of torx security bits, same size, T25, and there's some like orangey yellowy glue in here, and the same on the top, I can't get my finger in there, and the right hand side of that one. So apparently, according to the instructions that I found on the internet, we're going to scrape a bit of this out, same at the top there, so we can actually ease that off and ease the top one off and just adjust it ever so slightly. So, but I will put in some tip X and I'll show you when I've done that in a second. So I'm gonna go and scrape that out, scrape that. Now you really don't wanna see me scrape, that'd be a bit boring. Um, that's what I'm gonna do. I'll show you once I've done it. Okay, so now what I've done, see I haven't scraped loads away, but here, just move just enough, just to push it away from here. And what I'll do later on is I'll use my glue gun to refill this. Maybe need to scrape a bit more away and then when I come to do it, I will. I've done the same up there as well on the top one, so one and two. Scrape some glue away. I should now be able to release that and release that. But now before I do that, I'm going to put a bit of tip X just in place to go to the bottom one, it's probably easy to point out. Put a bit of marking tip X here and one above it. I'll do the same at the top as well, just a line, just so after I come to just, I know how far I've moved it backwards and forwards from. We're going to do that now, and I'll bring the video back on again. Okay, so that was a bit more awkward than I thought. So I've marked, I've marked on their current positioning anyway. It doesn't look great. It's quite difficult with Tipex, and the Tipex I'm using is about ten years old. Um, but it's enough for me to see the marker on the left-hand side positioning anyway um, of the two T25 Torx bits. Um, it feels that look as messy as this one, but again, it's just a guide. Bit of a fiddle backwards and forwards, hopefully in a bit, and uh, we'll be able to have the steering wheel straight. Um, Time to release the T25 torque bits and uh, torque, sorry, uh, screws and see what happens. Okay, lesson learned dig a lot more glue out. <laughs> so I've just done that, I've released them off, it wasn't moving, so I've just scraped loads more glue out. And now I can move them around backwards and forwards just a little bit. As I say, all we're doing is sliding it just a fraction this way, just a fraction that way. Um, tighten them back up, see what happens, and if it's still falling too much to the left, or it's now falling to the right, it's back to it again, loosen them off, adjust it again, backwards or forwards a little bit until you get it in the right place. Try again. Okay, I've tightened up those, uh, those two Torx screws um, on the uh, power steering um, unit. I'm now gonna, just gonna go and put that back on there, tighten back up the 13 mil spanner, Put the ignition on, let's see what happens. One. Nothing exciting, but. Two. Okay, let's go. Let's give it a go. Don't forget the car's still jacked up at the minute, and that's so the wheels can move and the power steering can turn to the left or the right as needs to be and that's what I need to know that way if it needs adjusting any more to the left or to the right. Moment of truth. We're in park because mine's the automatic Steptronic version and the handbrake is on. Here we go. Let's see what happens, fingers crossed. Whoa, watch the power steering go. See? First thing it's done is shoot all the way to the left. So let's knock it back off and go the other way. 
okay, I've just adjusted the two screws. I'm gonna keep going until I get this right. This could take blinking ages, but uh, so far the whole job's taken me about 30 minutes just sort of plodding and doing these bits of videos at the same time. It's no mammoth task by the looks of it so far. It's just getting this in the right place. Movement one millimeter at a time. All right, let's give it a go. Because all I'm doing is releasing the two screws and I'm just pushing it just a little bit that way and then just a little bit backwards that way if I need to, to readjust it. So you're just moving it bump, one millimetre that way or bump, one millimetre that way. Because they're both released. You move this one, the top bit moves anyway. You move the top bit and the bottom bit moves. Just make sure you've got plenty of glue, glue scraped out so you can push it. Okay, here we go, let's try again. First thing I'm gonna do is re-centralise the steering wheel. The roof's off just to make it just a bit easier. There we go. Wheels are central. Steering wheel is central. You see, actually, look, my car's done 40,000 miles, 18 years old, and you still get power steering problems. Here we go. Right, try again. Ready? Oh, my steering wheel hasn't moved so far. Oh, I ain't got a minute. I'll tell you something. That's not bad. Do you remember what it did last time? I literally hit it and bang, it went. This time. Spin it that way, spin it that way, spin it that way, spin it that way. I'll tell you something. Third time's a charm. Second time. Crikey, that's not bad at all. Let's go with that. Um, wow, I'm surprised. So the you can buy a second-hand steering column unit if you want to replace the whole unit. I'm sure it'll take you a while to replace it. I had a garage say to me, Paul, you, know, you can go off, buy a steering column um, and we'll fit it. We'll charge you £100, £150 to fit it. Um, and it would have cost me about £40 to £70 for a second-hand steering column. But what this has actually taken is £2 worth of Torx bits, uh, security bits in the local hardware store. And by the looks of it, about 35 minutes. Um, I'm a happy boy. Um, wow. Give it a spin again. <laughs> Never been so excited. Get in there. Um, it's just saved me about 150 quid. It's 200 pounds. That's, uh, that's not bad for half an hour's work. So I uh, hope you like the video. If it's any good, if it's helped you, um, give it a like. If you've got any questions, drop me a, a message on YouTube and I'll answer them as I go along. These, you never know how these videos are going to go. You don't really think out a script in advance about what you're going to say or not going to say. And you, uh, if you've never done it, you don't really know what you're doing. So what I'm going to do now anyway is I've got that working. We can see, no longer falling to the left or the right. Um, I've got to put all this back together. But before I do that, I'm going to get my uh, two pound glue, glue gun out that I got from the local pound shop. And I'm going to go and refill the two holes there. Uh, reason I want to refill it, I don't want those screws budging an inch. Um, I might have to do this again in a month, six months, two years, ten years, who knows. Um, but if these are just in, we know it only takes 30, 35 minutes at a slow plod, I'm not even rushing. Um, so not bad. Um, I've got to piece all this video together, hope it comes out okay. I say if you like it, give it a thumbs up. Um, if it's helped you, drop me a comment just to say it's helped. I haven't seen any videos on here yet, but uh, let's give it a go. Cheers, thanks for watching. Okay, so I've put things back together now. The plate's back over there. So that is back in place. I meant to say earlier, I'm completely forgotten, I'm really sorry. The ones with the bracket that hold the fuse board in place. So those two, uh, the two bolts that hold the uh, fuse board bracket in place, they are eight mil. Whereas one that holds the fuse board in place is 10 mil.